بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um there's a car that's blocking just around here uh, if you can move the car immediately inshallah it's a four by four inshallah jazakallah bismillahir rahmanir rahim alam naj'al lahu aynayn wa lisanan wa shafatayn wa hadaynahu najdayn sadaqallahu alazim wa qala an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ وكما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم First of all I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us this opportunity once again to sit in his blessed majlis to sit in the company of the awliya kiram and also to listen to the hadith of Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم to listen to the Quran the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Quran Sharif and also to take a lot of information and information which is very very essential in today's climate in today's society many many times um, i'm just telling you through experience and one of the reasons why we have this certain topic today is because of the discussions and the meetings uh, and the companionship which we've had with various people and many many individuals especially our youngsters you know they're quite shy to speak on such topics and some are not shy they come straight forward to you and say molsab nauzubillah i've been looking at this i've got this illness i've got that illness very blatantly no haya nothing but at least they have that concern that uh, you know my eyes are not very clean they look at evil this is what i do and it's something that you know uh, we we can help but at the same time it's a concern for us that this these are the people who are worried about their their iman worried about their well-being there will be so many hundreds and thousands of youth that are not worried about their well-being and their iman and their akhirat and they'll be day and night involved in such guna and they're quite shy to talk to a scholar to talk to somebody hence for this reason we have chosen this topic today that inshallah if you are shy to speak to someone in fact you should not be shy when it's to do with the akhirat you should not be shy we all have concerns we all have our guna but when we speak to a scholar, speak to an imam, or speak to any of our kabir, and we say to them that, Mosab, I have this illness of the eyes, I have this illness of the ears, I need some help, I need some support, I need some guidance. Only then they can help you. If there is no one that you can go to, or you know, there is somebody that you know you know you can benefit from. You know, go to somebody. There is somebody out there who can help you. So, for this reason, we have kept this program that inshallah. If you are shy to go to somebody, then inshallah today you will learn and benefit and inshallah you will have some guidance in how to protect our gazes and many other illnesses. Uh, inshallah there's many many things that will be discussed today. I don't want to take a lot of your time inshallah. First of all, we'll start the, Quran, uh, start the program with the tilawat of the Quran Sharif and inshallah I will call uh, Mus'ab Bapu whose grandmother passed away just a few weeks ago Rashida Masih's grandson inshallah he'll be coming and reciting the Quran Sharif A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم عموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون صدق الله العظيم 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward his grandmother and elevate her status in Jannatul Firdaus. Inshallah, today we'll remember her in the dua as well. Uh, and uh, we'll make lots of dua, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make this also a means of sadaqah jariah for her as well. Inshallah, for the night, I want to call um, Hafiz uh, Taha from Jamia Masjid to come forward and inshallah recite the night. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Please can everyone recite to Ruth Sharif. He nazar me jamali habibi khuda. He nazar me jamali habibi khuda. Unki tasweer sine me mojood hai. Jis nila kar kalami ilahi diya. Jis nila kar kalami ilahi diya. Wo Muhammad Madine. Me mojood hai. Phula. Phule khilte hai par par. Kis walli ala. Joom kar kehe rahi hai. Ye baadhe saba. Aisi khushbu chaman ke. گلوں میں کہا ایسی خوشبو چمن کے گلوں میں کہا جو نبی کے پسینے میں موجود ہے چھوڑنا تیر تیبہ گوارا منظر زمانے میں دیکھا نہیں ایسا منظر زمانے میں دیکھا نہیں جیسا منظر مدینے میں موجود ہے جب کے توپ سپینے سے ٹکرا گیا جب کے توپ سپینے سے ٹکرا گیا میں نے اس سے یہ بیسا کٹا کہے دیا کیا بغارے گتو کاشتا یہ دین کا کیا بغارے گتو کاشتا یہ دین کا نہ کھڑا جب سفینے میں موجود ہے ہم نے مانا کہ جنت بہت ہے حسین ہم نے مانا کہ جنت بہت ہے حسین چھوڑ کر ہم مدینہ نہ جائے کہیں یوں تو جنت میں سب ہے مدینہ نہیں یوں تو جنت میں سب ہے مدینہ نہیں اور جنت مدینے میں موجود ہے وہ ابو بکر و فاروق و عثمان علی وہ ابو بکر و فاروق و عثمان علی ہے یہ سب ان کے 
دین مبی کے فقی وہ فقیروں کے افضل شہ امبیا وہ فقیروں کے افضل شہ امبیا وہ شہنشاہ مدینے میں موجود ہے ہے نظر میں جمال حبیب خدا ہے نظر میں جمال حبیب خدا ان کی تصویر سینے میں موجود ہے جس نے لا کر کلام الہی دیا جس نے لا کر کلام الہی دیا وہ محمد مدینے میں موجود ہے السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ Mashallah, Allahumma Zid Fazid. Another great product of Preston he is the grandson of Marhum Gulam Limber. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him the highest abode in Jannat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create many, many of these little children to recite nats in, in, in our society. Unfortunately, the society today, we hardly hear anyone reciting any nats, especially from our community. You can't find anyone else, so we have to call somebody from outside. So inshallah in future let's all teach our children a great tarbiyat, a, a right nice tarbiyat to make them understand the, the ni'mat of naat as well. Ki naat par na bhi sunnat hai aur naat sunna bhi sunnat hai. Inshallah umid hai ki hum dono par amal karenge. Without further ado inshallah, uh, first of all we will have the presentation of the physical aspects of um, the eyes and then inshallah Hazrat will speak on the spiritual aspects of the eyes. So for the, for the physical aspect of the eyes, Inshallah, I'd like to call Molana Ilyas Raja Sahib, who is also the teacher of Rahim Yaqami in Bolton, Inshallah. Jazakallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وقال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وفي الأرض آيات للموقنين وفي أنفسكم أفلا تبصرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم 
خیر الناس من طال عمره و حسن عمله او کما قال علیہ الصلاۃ والسلام my dear listeners is the great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has allowed us to come into the house of his house to listen to his words and to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blesses this gathering we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us benefit from whatever we listen to we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a means of us increasing our love for him through this and the love of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be to make us from those who will be with him in jannah ameen Allah has blessed us my dear brothers with innumerable with innumerable blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says in the Quran wa in ta'uddu ni'matallahi la tuhsuha that if you were to count the ni'mas of Allah you will not be able to count them yeah, they're innumerable billions and billions of ni'mah you will not be able to count them yeah firstly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we firstly we were, we, we didn't exist that allah gave us existence then he made us human rather than an animal another blessing yeah. then he made us sahih salim he made us healthy he gave us eyes we are not blind we are not deaf we have our senses yeah. then he gave us the best the, the most the greatest of all blessings yeah iman he made us muslims and then he made us from the ummah of the best of his creation the best of messengers muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam imam al muttaqin and because of that because of that link we are now the best of nations yeah and because of that link so many blessings so many blessings the previous nations cannot enter jannah it is haram upon them until the nation of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam doesn't enter yeah. so many any one of these nemats i've mentioned yeah if we were to prostrate from the day we were born until the day that we die in thanking allah we will not be able to even thank we will not be able to truly thank allah for even one blessing yeah if we were to be given the the age of nuh alayhi salam and we did not disobey allah to the blinking of an eye even then we will not be able to repay even one of these blessings yeah there's a, there's a narration mentioned by imam hakim in his mustadrakul hakim al sahihain regarding an abid a worshipper from one of the worshippers of the past nations <coughs> he mentions that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came out to his sahaba and he said to the sahaba that jibril alayhi salam just came from me yeah. and he mentioned to me that i swear by that being who has sent me with the truth there was an abid there was a worshipper who worshiped allah for 500 years yeah. and this worshipper worshiped for allah allah for 500 years at the top of a mountain this mountain was located on a small island the island island was surrounded on all four sides by salty water okay. at the foot of the mountain was a little stream which would give salty which would give sweet water and next to the stream was a little was a pomegranate tree which would on a daily basis give a fresh fruit so this abid what he would do at night he would come down to the foot of the mountain and he would do wudu he would drink from the water and he would have this fruit and then go back to the top of the mountain yeah, and then he would worship allah all night and all day yeah, next day he would come back again same thing he would come down and like this days years decades centuries passed 500 years passed like this and when the time of his death came near he made dua to allah oh allah when i die make me die in the state of sujood subhanallah yeah, and not only that keep my body preserved in that position till the day of judgment so that when i get resurrected i'm resurrected in the state of sujood if 500 years was not enough we have a difficulty praying five times a day and look at this abid so jibril alayhi salam says to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whenever us angels come down and we go up i pass we pass by this person he's still preserved allah allah accepted his dua made him die in sujood and he's still preserved in sujood till the day of judgment and jibril alayhi salam then tells the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this abid would be resurrected on the day of judgment and he will be brought before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angels adkhilu abdi al janna bi rahmati yeah enter the slave of mine into jannah through my rahmah and mercy this abid he has worshiped allah for many years he somehow thinks that his amal was good enough to get him into jannah so he will turn around and he will say bal bi amali rada i want to go in jannah through my actions So Allah will again say to him no enter jannah through my mercy and he will insist bal bi amali so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the angels okay put 
get his good deeds and the ni'mas I gave him, measure them against the ni'mas, measure them, um, measure my ni'mas against his good deeds. So this will be done and the first ni'mas that will be brought, sorry, it's a little bit slow. The first ni'mas that will be brought will be his eyesight and his eyesight will be put on one side and his good deeds will be put on the other and all his good deeds will be taken up by this one ni'mah and now every all every other ni'mah is left the billions of other ni'mahs he had was left now Allah has no choice he says to the angels that take this banda of mine to Jahannam so he's being taken towards Jahannam now the person realizes he has no good deeds he, he the only thing he has left is Allah's rahmah then he says Rabbi bi rahmatika adkhilni al-jannah oh my lord enter me into Jannah through your rahmah then Allah SWT will call him back and say, okay, bring him back. And he will say, Ya Abdi, man khalaqaka wa lam taku shay'a. Who created you when you were nothing? Was it you or was it me? He say, Ya Rabbi, anta Ya Rabbi, because of you, Ya Allah. Then he will say, Allah SWT will say, that who gave you the tawfiq to worship me for 500 years? He will say, anta Ya Rabbi, who gave, you the, uh, who gave you a place to stay on the mountain? Who gave you sweet water from salty water? Who gave you a fresh fruit every day from that tree, which normally only fruits once a year? And then you ask me to... Make you die in the state of sujood and I did that for you. Who did all this? He goes, you did this, Ya Allah. Allah SWT will then say, فَذَلِكَ بِرَحْمَتِي All of this was through my rahmah. وَبِرَحْمَتِي أُدْخِلُكَ الْجَنَّةِ And through my rahmah, I will enter you into Jannah. They will enter him into Jannah and Allah SWT will say, أَدْخِلُوا abdi al الْجَنَّةِ فَنِعْمَ الْعَبْدُ كُنْتَ يَا عَبْدِي That this slave of mine, you were a very good slave. And then Jibreel Islam turns around to the Prophet SAW and says, That, oh Muhammad, وسلم, all things are dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will not enter Jannah through his actions. So where are we going to be? So what is the point of good deeds if they won't earn us Jannah? Well, one scholar, he mentions that our good deeds are like that bowl that a beggar puts out in front of a rich person hoping to attract the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we need to do these good deeds inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will through by looking at our deeds will forgive us inshallah on the day of judgment would also enter us into Jannah yeah. so our ulama have mentioned that for every single ni'mah Allah has given us there's three things we should do first of all that, that, that shukr is wajib upon every ni'mah so how do we do shukr first of all Allah has given us a ni'mah we need to do i'tiraf with the heart that, oh Allah, you gave me this ni'mah, I didn't deserve it. Yeah, admit it with the heart. Then, with his tongue, he should, he should say, Allahumma laka alhamdu wa laka shukr. Oh Allah, you gave me this ni'mah, I've, I've been disobeying you. Yeah, you could have taken this ni'mah away from me, but you didn't. Yeah. And like this, a person, by the way, when he, when he says and he remembers Allah's ni'mahs, his love for Allah will increase. This is a very good way of increasing love. Yeah, Al-insanu abdul, abdul ihsan. Al-Insanu Abdul Ahsan That uh, Insan, he's the slave of Ni'mas When somebody does you a favor, you start liking them And you remember those favors, you like that person more So a person, person should do this on a regular basis And then, the main part He should use that Ni'mah in the way Allah wants him to use that Ni'mah Okay So a person, he's been given his eyesight So you should do Ittaraf Oh Allah, I've been sinning my whole life Yeah, you could have taken, you could have snatched my eyesight away anytime But you, you've given me this eyesight yeah. Allahumma laka alhamdu laka shukr Then, with these eyes he should use it not to look at ghayr mahram, not to look at evil, not to look at films, rather to look at the Kaaba, to look at the Quran, to look at the mountains, to look at the creation of Allah and ponder upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. So these eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَفِي الْأَرْضِ آيَاتُ لِلْمُقِينِينَ وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْسِرُونَ That in the earth are signs for those who believe, and in yourselves as well. Do you not see? Yeah. So over here, Allah SWT is telling the believers, للموقنين, that those who believe, when they see the earth, things in the earth, this, this is a sign that Allah exists. He looks at the mountains and he says, Alhamdulillah, this is Allah SWT, that somebody has created these yeah, mountains. When he sees the sun rising, everything he sees around him is a sign that Allah SWT exists. Yeah. And even in yourselves, yeah, Allah Mashaukani, uh, Rahimahullah, he mentions in his tafsir, أَفَلَا تَنْذُرُونَ بِعَيْنِ الْبَصِيرَةِ that do you not look with the eyes of basira, consideration, with the eyes of insight? Because yeah. if you did that, فَتَسْتَدِلُّونَ بِذَلِكَ 
al al khaliq al razaq al munfaridi bil uluhiya then it will give you proof by doing that by pondering upon the earth and in yourselves it will give you those proofs that will prove to you that there is one khaliq al razaq who is truly divine these are the proofs of allah yeah, so remember that the talk that we're doing inshallah it will be a means of getting the greatness of allah in our hearts that this cannot have been created by anyone except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so keeping these points in mind we're going to continue with the eye inshallah so um, and by the way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khaliq he's the creator he creates without he's the only one that's the real khaliq he creates without any raw materials yeah we can't do that we we're sonic we, we're just assemblers yeah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bari he's the originator yeah he doesn't copy anyone's designs and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al musawwir the fashioner and we will see just in one part of the one i'm only going to be mentioning very very skimming the top of, of the things of regarding the eye but we will see in those little things how allah SWT is truly the musawwir so the eye weighing less than 30 grams the size of ping pong balls are those organs allah has given us which allow us to see the world yeah. its sensitivity is such that the eyes can see a candle can see a match being lit on a moonless night 50 miles away the resolution of the eye is 550 megapixels at 60 frames per second the iphones of today the 48 megapixel iphones today are, are no comparison they are workhorses constantly working at 100 percent as soon as we open our eyes 100 percent the eyes are giving it's the only part of the body that's 100 percent and they don't need warming up yeah they can detect something 0 0.01 seconds that's how quick they respond they allow us to see 70 million colors, different colors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created that we can, um, um, we can, we can decipher. 80% of everything that we learn comes through our eyes. 50% yeah. of the brain's energy and power goes in assessing and, 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 and monitoring and working out the information coming from the eyes. No wonder then that the eye has two million working parts. Who's maintaining this? Who's created this from one cell? When the you know from when we were when when we were when the when uh, we were created in the fetus, for one cell it started from. Who created all of this? Allah. So we're gonna just go just to keep our attention. I've made a few small clips. Inshallah, this will help with our attention and inshallah the retention. So I'm gonna just make you go to the next one. The eyes, the second most complex organ after the brain. When we see there is much more happening behind the scenes than meets the eye. The eyelids play a crucial role in blinking out any foreign particles like dust in the blink of an eye. Excuse the pun. The front clear surface of the eye is known as the cornea. You can feel its shape by closing your lids and putting your finger on it and then moving your eyes side to side. That bump that you feel, that's your cornea. There is no blood vessel on the cornea. It receives oxygen directly from the air. The eyelids are one of the fastest muscles in your body. Look at how quickly the dust particle is expelled. On average, we blink 20,000 times a day. So 20,000 times a day, we are blinking. Every time we blink, it's a very important process by the way the blinking every time we blink the eye is lubricated with a thin layer of tears and these tears are extremely important in the in uh, uh, enabling the eyes to focus the light it creates a smooth surface yeah and every time we blink this is happening and when people's don't when people don't have the amount, correct amount of tears or the tear is not coating properly they get blurry vision and they get a lot of problems yeah we even have patients who can't blink properly and then they have to physically keep the eyes closed yes yeah, so the eyes don't dry out so how many of us have ever thought of our blinking as a na'mah of Allah? Yeah, 20,000 times a day. And it's possible to blink five times in a second. That's why when something happens very quick, what do we say? It's as quick as the blinking of an eye. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran mentions in a few places. In one place he mentions, وَمَا أَمْرُنَا إِلَّا wahida. Our command is but one, kalamhim bil basar, Like the blinking of an eye. So even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is acknowledging how He's created the eye to blink so quickly. So we'll travel from the front of the eye.
Sorry, it's a little bit slow. We're going to travel from the front of the eye and go backwards. I know I've not got, I've got limited time, so I'm going to have to try and skip a few parts. So, first of all, we're going to look at the, the cornea. The cornea, it's the dome shaped window at the front of the eye. Okay, the only reason you can see it here is so clear is because of the reflection. It's a remarkable structure, only 0.5 millimeters in thickness. But the reason why it's clear is two reasons. One, it gets its blood vessels, it doesn't have any blood vessels. So every other part of your body, it gets nourished by oxygen through the blood. But the eye, the cornea, is one of the only structures, even though it's made from the same material as your skin, it's the only part of the body which receives oxygen directly from the air. Yeah? And it also has, a, uh, it has five layers, like I said, 0.5. Zero point five millimeters in thickness, but the reason why it's clear is that these the collagen fibers here are very arranged in a very orderly fashion. So that's another reason yeah, why why the cornea, which is that window, yeah, and every single structure here, by the way, has a very important role. Yeah, the endothelium, which is a single layer say, at the back, it pumps water out. In that chamber, you have water, aqueous humor, and it goes inside the cornea, and it is the job of the endothelium to pump that water out. And there's many features, like I said, I don't have time and I've been told to try and um, condense it. So I'm going to continue. <coughs> okay, so what happens? So the cornea, as I mentioned to you, is very important in the focusing of the eye. Yeah, you would have thought that the lens is the most important part of, of focusing. Yeah, but that's only less than half correct. Yeah, the cornea is very important. Let's look at how we focus light onto the back of the eye. So you have an apple. Okay. So imagine a person is looking at an apple far away. Light travels from the sun 93 million miles away at the speed of light 300 meter, million meters per second. And Allah SWT sends this light to it. It takes about 8 minutes for, for it to come from the sun and hit the apple. The apple, the wavelengths of light or the photons of light hit the apple. Some are absorbed by the apple and some are reflected back off the apple. And that's what gives it that's what gives every object the colour that it is. Depends on what lights, what photons of light reflect, what wavelengths of light are reflected back off the object. So let's imagine the apple and light hits the apple and then it comes straight into the eye. It hits the cornea. Because of the curvature of the cornea and because of the refractive index, it's made out of a, out of a different material like water. Light travels differently in water. When you look at water, things appear not the same depth because light travel is traveling different in different mediums. So in air, light travels, they say at the refractive index, light, um, air, is, air travels in light at the refractive index of 1.0, okay? Whereas the cornea is 1.3, so it bends the light. Okay, then it goes into the pupil. The pupil is a gap, by the way. It's not a structure, it's just a gap between the iris, which is the colored part. And then it hits the front of the lens. The lens is a slightly different refractive index and it's also slightly different curvature. So then it bends a bit more and then it gets focused onto the back of the eye. And as you can notice, the apple is upside down. So everything in our eye is focused upside down back to front. And it is a job of the brain to then put it back in the correct direction. It is a job of the brain to do many, many things, to decipher lines, to decipher perception, depth perception, yeah, it's a different topic. The, the eye is much more complex. The brain is much more complex than the eye. Um, so we'll just stick to the eye for now. And, and, and the processing of the brain is, is according to most um, scientists, they don't really know exactly how everything works, how the eye processes, uh, how the brain processes that information anyway. Okay. okay. The eye is 20, 22 millimeters in focal length. So it requires 60 diopters of power. You might have heard of 60 diopters. Somebody's got a prescription of minus 3 diopters or plus 2 diopters. Yeah? Somebody might have thick glasses with plus 10 diopters maybe. So the eye is actually 60 diopters. And our eyes don't look that thick when we look at them. So Allah's created, like I said, Allah's engineering is... Allah's engineering, what can we say? Okay, so majority of the power comes from the cornea, 40 diopters. And that's why... This is the layer, when you have laser eye surgery, they modify this layer, okay? And then the lens is 20 diopters in power. That allows the light to be focused exactly there, 
okay? When we're reading, by the way, this lens is remarkable. It has the ability to change shape. Yeah, these ciliary muscles, they relax and they become tighter in order to make this lens more convex. So when, when you read, the light comes into your eye and gets focused behind the eye. And the lens, it becomes fatter. And you could add another eight diopters onto that. Yeah. If you're reading something at say 40 centimeters, it requires 2.5 diopters of power. So the lens changes shape and folk brings the light back onto the back of the eye. Okay, so those, we're gonna watch the next video. The iris, this is the colored part, the colored ring that sits behind the cornea. The hole in the middle, which is black, is called the pupil. The iris regulates the amount of light coming into the eyes. If it's too bright or when focusing, it becomes smaller and therefore protects the eye from brightness. And when it's dark, the eyes need more light, it becomes dilated and bigger. Behind the iris is the lens. The lens can become more fatter or convex to help focus the light when reading. The lens stops working properly for most people after the age of 40 and therefore they will need glasses for reading. Light from a faraway object comes in into the cornea, bends a little bit and then bends a little bit more through the lens and focuses itself exactly on the retina, the light sensitive part of the eye. This scene shows how things are blurry far away for some people who are myopic or nearsighted. The light is being focused not on the retina but a little before the retina. This can be because the eye is too long. The next picture shows a hyperopic eye where things close by are blurrier than things far away. The focus point is behind the eye. The eyeball is a bit too short. Nothing that a pair of glasses can't fix. Okay, so you saw in the video, the light, when it's focused exactly on the back of the eye, then the person gets clear vision. But if the light is focused a little bit in front of the back of the eye, then the image becomes blurry. Yeah. For many of one third, one out of three people in the UK are myopic. Okay, and that figure is rising. There's a pandemic of myopia. They're saying by 2050, 50% 50 of the population will be myopic. And one of the reasons, there are many reasons, but the environmental factors, one of the main reasons is that we're not going outside enough. Yes. We are looking at computer screens, we're looking at our phones all day long, we are reading books all the time, the walls are closed, everything is closed around us and we're not going out. So when the COVID lockdown happened, people were just indoors. And this causes one of the things, causes myopia, one of the causes of myopia. So our eyes grow mainly from when we're born. The first three years is when the eye grows from 17 millimeters, that's when it grows the most. And then after that, it carries on growing up until your mid 20s. So we need to make sure that that category of people especially kids, every day they should go outside a little bit. Every day you should try and look at things far away. Give your eyes a break. Even when you're looking at a screen, again, I've not got time to go into it because um, we don't have time. But um, one tip is they're saying that 20, 20, 20, that for every 20 minutes of screen time, yeah, have a break for 20 seconds looking at something 20 feet away. Okay? Because if we're constantly not indoors and we're not going outside, it can lead to myopia. Okay? So myopia, If our eyes, myopia occurs of because of two reasons. Either the eye is too long, or either the front of the eye, the curvature of the eye is too curved. Yeah, the more curved it is, the more the light goes forward. So as you can see here, if your eye is longer than it should be by one millimeter, it means that your numbers are minus three. Look at how exact Allah SWT, how concise Allah has maintaining our eyes throughout our life. If it's just out by zero point, by one millimeter, it means that our vision will be blurry. That's minus three on the chart. You might have been for an eye test, you've probably seen it. So that's quite blurry, okay? So for most people, what happens is, as you're growing, when you're born, your eyes are 70 millimeters across. As you're growing, as your eye grows, the front of the eye, it flattens automatically. Allah's, Allah's system, He makes the cornea become more flatter. So it reduces in power, so the eye, the light stays maintained on the back of the eye. Amazing process, yeah? And when this process, there's something goes wrong in this process, that's when you get myopia or, 
or hyperopia. <coughs> so those people that need glasses, that don't need glasses, they should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can, they can see without glasses. Yeah? And those that do wear glasses, they should also thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they've got glasses. 20% yeah? of the world's population who are blind, are blind because they don't have glasses. So you should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has given you, given you glasses, Allah has given you, uh, made us the asbab, made the optician the asbab. So you should thank us as well. So it's reversible blindness because of not having glasses. 39% of the world are blind because of cataract. Again, another reversible disease. Very easy. Very small operation is required. The lens of the eye becomes cloudy and a person can't see. And in poor countries, they don't have the facilities of having this operation. Us in the UK, as soon as a person is referred for cataract in Bolton, three weeks, they've had the cataract done. Yeah. In poor countries, they're completely blind. I've seen people, even in my own practice, they couldn't even walk out of the room without help. And then they've had the operation and they've come walking to the practice. Yeah. So imagine in poor countries, yeah, what they're going through. Yeah. One of our Ustad, uh, Mufti Fallahi, he spoke to me recently, he mentioned they're doing operations in India. 300 operations very soon to have this operation done. And for many of these people, by the time they get this operation done, they're probably literally blind. And just having the operation done, it's a very simple operation. I'm going to skip a few bits. So one out of three over, over the age of 60 will require a cataract operation at some point in the UK. So the operation is quite advanced. It's a very advanced um, surgery. Um, a probe is put into the eye. Two millimeters hole is made. The lens is broken and then sucked in. And then an artificial lens which is folded is put in a tube and it's inserted into the eye. When the probe comes out, it automatically closes. It's only a two millimeter incision. So no stitches are needed. The person has the operation, 15 minutes, painless, and they can see again. I forgot to mention as well, a cataract, a person is twice as likely to have a cataract if they smoke. Our eyes move thanks to six muscles in each eye. Problems with these muscles can give rise to many symptoms, including double vision, and headaches. The two eyes working together is what gives us our depth perception. When the image is focused on your retina, the light photons trigger off nerve impulses that travel via the optic nerve to the brain for processing. The retina is full of photoreceptors that are sensitive to different wavelengths of light. Our eyes can see up to 7 million colors due to the photoreceptor cells known as the cone cells. The cone cells are of three types, red, green, and blue. Most of these cone cells are packed together in an area of the eye known as the photovia. This is what gives us sharp, detailed central vision. The rod cells are responsible for vision in dim light and are mainly found in the peripheral retina. <clears throat> Detail is not needed in our side vision as much as the center, so rod cells will suffice there. The information travels via the optic nerve to the brain where it is processed at the back of the brain. Eventually, a completed image reaches consciousness somewhere in the brain which is yet to be identified. So you can see that there's, a, there's a, a wire or a cable which comes from the eye and all the messages from the eye go to the brain via this cable. Okay. So let's have a look quickly at what the optician sees. When the optician sees, he looks into your eyes from here and the view that he gets is, looks like this. Okay. So this is the optic nerve, what you just saw on the side view there. Okay. It's the only place in the body, the, the retina is the thin layer of skin, 0.5 millimeters, which lines the back of the eye. It's responsible for picking up the light. There's 125 million photoreceptors on the retina. Yeah? And this is as big as a stamp, a big stamp. So the full retina is 33 millimeters in diameter from one side to the other. Yeah, the size of a big stamp. And all the information from the 125 million photoreceptors go into this small cable 
which is 1.75 millimeters in diameter, which is like a thick credit card. Imagine the cable has a million wires inside it, okay, axons, and 125 million photoreceptors. And this is the main part that we look from, where there's about there's many cone cells, and cone cells are responsible for our central vision, and most of the cone cells are located in this area here, and it's it's an area 1.2 millimeters. So as you can see, there's a bit of data compression happening. The retina has 125 million receptors, but the nerves that go to the brain only have a million. So some data processing is happening on the retina itself. Okay, skip to the next one. Okay, so that's a side view of the million nerves fibers. By the way, if any of these nerve fibers gets damaged or detached, there's no way of reattaching them. They're so sensitive and they're so minute that you can have a corneal transplant the front of the eye but you can never ever have a full eye transplant it's impossible and i don't think it will ever be possible yeah. however there is one person in history that i know of that has had a full eye reinsertion or a full eye <laughs> transplant if you want to call it after the eyes have been surveyed does anybody know who that is let's start there okay. i'll give you a clue press the next uh, you're not supposed to show the answer fine the Battle of Uhud. So Qatada bin Nu'man radiallahu anhu, in the Battle of Uhud, his eye was struck to the extent where his eye fell out, came out from his socket and fell on his cheek. He came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the best of all human beings, who put the eye back into his place. And it was later said that فَكَانَتْ أَحْسَنَ عَيْنَيْهِ وَأَحَدَّهُمَا That the eye that was put back in, it was the better of the two eyes afterwards, and the sharpest. Okay. So this is uh, just a side point. Okay. So just a quick... I've got five minutes left. The things that we see, the optician sees are these diseases. These are what causes blindness in the UK or in the Western world, in the developed countries. Yeah, macular degeneration, I'll mention that very briefly. Glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy. By the way, in my practice, this is a lot higher because us Asians, South Asians, we're, 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 we're six times more likely to be diabetic. Okay? One in 16 people in the UK are diabetic, but we're six times more likely to be diabetic just because of being Asian our genes and also because of our diets but I'll mention that in a minute the first thing I'll mention is glaucoma so glaucoma is a disease which damages the optic nerve very very slowly in most cases there's two types open angle and closed angle I'm just going to mention the first type so one in 40 over the age of 40 get a disease called glaucoma it's a silent blinder why because the person isn't in any pain it happens very very slowly and the nerves that get damaged first are the, are the ones that are responsible for your side vision and so you do, a person doesn't really notice and it happens mainly because the pressure in the eye builds up and the pressure in the eye damages these nerves it strangles the nerves okay so it's very important anyone over the age of 40 they should have regular eye tests because they'll never know they're getting this yeah unless they come for regular checks the optician will check the pressure will check the visual fields yeah and if there's a problem they can be sent to the hospital and the, it can be prevented with drops so a person that has glaucoma this is what they see Okay, so the side vision, yeah. May Allah save us from this, inshallah. Okay, press the next one again. So diabetic retinopathy. So diabetes, 1 in 16 people, 5 million have it in the UK. Okay, because of the high sugar in the blood, it damages the blood vessels. Okay, so because this is the only place you can see blood vessels without cutting your skin, checking the back of the eye is actually a good health check for the blood vessels around your whole body. So many diseases, diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol, many diseases that affect the blood vessels. I had a girl come in last week, she had bleeding in her eye, only 18 years old. She got rushed to the hospital, she had some kind of problem with the liver. So you'd be surprised at what the eyes can pick up. Also the optic nerve and the retina is the only part of the central nervous system which can be seen from the exterior. So anything that affects your brain, yeah, multiple sclerosis for example, yeah, a disease, it shows up usually with swelling of the optic nerve. So very important that we get regular checks. And if you're diabetic, you've got family history of diabetes, then it's important that we keep on top of our diabetes. I'll mention that towards the end if I've got time. And then the leading cause of blindness in the UK is macular degeneration. What is this? As we get old, for most people, over the age of 50, 60, the macular region, which is responsible for our central vision, it starts to thin, okay? and yellow protein deposits called drusen start to deposit our eyes are working constantly there's high metabolism 
So as we get older, the eye can't get rid of the waste as quickly and then you, you start damaging the eye. There's no cure for it. However, the uh, people that study these things have said that people that eat a healthy diet, people that eat fruits with greens, green inside them like spinach, kale, there's an ingredient called lutein. And if a person eats this, then this will help prevent that. And also as well, I forgot to mention smoking. person that smokes is four times more likely to get this. So again, you can tell I've been mentioning smoking, something you need to definitely cut out if you want to protect your eyes. So a person that has a uh, macular degeneration, this is what they see, their central vision is blurry. Before I finish, I'm not going to mention the things I was going to mention because I've not got time. But just generally speaking, our deen teaches us, uh, a, pro a person came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, who is the best of people? The Prophet ﷺ said, Man tala umrahu wa hasun amaluhu. The one that has the, the longest life, long life and good actions. Yeah, you can only do those two things if you're healthy. Yeah, you, can only do, you, can only do, uh, you can only have a long life if you're healthy and you can only do good actions if you're healthy as well. So very important that if we want to be the best of people, we look after ourselves. Yeah, and Allah SWT has given us a prescription of two things, dua and dawa. Yeah, dua, we ask Allah, He's the musabibul asbab. We make dua to Him. The Prophet has taught us many duas. I don't have time to go into them, but I'm sure you know some duas that are linked to the eyes. If not, then we can ask Allah every day to keep our bodies in good health. And then with dua is dawa. We have to use the means. Allah made this darul asbab. Yeah? So if somebody has got diabetes or a family history of diabetes, and they've been to the doctors and they've been told they've got high sugar, they've got X, Y, and Z. It, it shouldn't mean that a person conspires that everything is made up. Yeah, we have people like that in the practice. Doctor said I've got diabetes. Somebody came last week. They've been told last three, four years. And he's saying that the doctor's just making it up. And then now he's got a bleed at the back of the eye. So there is a, we need to be aware that the doctors do tell us these things. Yeah. Um, so have regular eye tests, quit smoking, eat healthy and control our weight and i'm just going to end the talk on of one last point that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions as well in the quran that blindness of the eyes obviously is a it's a great loss a person that doesn't have eyes is a great loss but true blindness is the blindness of the heart allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the quran fil fatakuna lahum yaqiluna biha aw adhan yasma'una biha fa innaha la ta'mal absar walakin ta'mal qulub allati fi sudur that do you not travel in the earth? Do they not travel in the earth so that they may have hearts to understand with or ears to hear with? It is not the eyes that are blind, rather it is the rather it is the hearts in the chest that are blind. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from being blind to the truth. And I'll end my talk there that one alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah to Molani Yassab. Um, he's an optician as well, optometrist. So, mashallah, we've benefited a lot from the information. Um, that was a physical aspect of the eyes, and inshallah, we will now have the spiritual aspect of the eyes. And this is more important to understand the spiritual aspect. A lot of the times we come for uh, namaz, salah, we do a lot of ibadat, but we don't feel the enjoyment of our ibadat. As the Shaykh Nawalallahu Marqadahu would mention, that a lot of his friends. In the initial stages of uh, tasawwuf, when they are struggling and in terms of you know uh, s sacrificing their nafs, you know they begin to enjoy the ibadat and the worship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But as soon as they start to cast evil glances and uh, bad nazri, then they begin to lose the enjoyment of their ibadat. So this is why the spiritual aspect is very very important. Inshallah, for that reason, I want to call. My respected and honorable Ustad Hazrat Mawlana Abdul Rahim Sab to come forward and share with us uh, his words of wisdom. Jazakum. And inshallah, if you can remain seated, um, do not worry about our namaz. Inshallah, we will pray our Isha as whenever the program is finished. And uh, also, if you can just come forward, some of the brothers, try and fill the gaps in the inshallah, it'll be very beneficial. Amen.
السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علیہ رسول کبھی اما با مولانا ڈاکٹر الیاس راجا صاحب واز ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی اناٹمی آف دی آئی واٹ از دیٹ ٹیچرس دیٹ دی آئی did not did not come into existence by chance it was created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how foolish would it be if you believe that that iphone which has only 48 megapixel was made by someone and this eye which every human every creation every animal every fish every bird has there is no creator to it and it came into existence by chance Would that not be foolish? You tell me. So if this mobile phone has a maker, then this eye also has a maker. And that is none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the crocodile, it has two eyelids. One goes horizontally and one goes up and down. So when it's underwater, it opens one but the other one is closed. But it can still see underwater. When it comes up the water, it opens both and you can see. Who made the eye like that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it. And this eye, as Mawlana sahab was mentioning, is a great ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't realize how great ni'mat it is. Yesterday, I was talking to my friend Mawlana Sikandar sahab. We were sitting in our... HLC and uh, talking and his phone came he said, oh, my, this is my elder sister so he talked and then he passed the phone to me he said ko so I said kya hale bhenti ko khairiya diye ho and she was really happy and then she says to Mulan sahab mere li dua karna meri aankh bohat kamzor ho rahi hai Allah meri aankh ko salamat rakhe ab dekho na Mulan sahab mujhe Quran Sharif muh par to aata nahi agar mein meri aankh chali gai to mein Quran Sharif kaise padhungi اللہ اکبر دیکھا ہم تو حافظ قرآن ہیں ہم کو اندازہ نہیں ہے لیکن جو حافظ نہیں ہے ان کے لیے آنکھ کتنی بڑی نعمت ہے اگر آدمی نبی نہ ہو گیا تو قرآن شریف کیسے پڑھے گا تو اس خاتون کو بیچاری کو فکر ہے کہ اگر میری آنکھ چلی گئی تو میں قرآن شریف کیسے پڑھوں گی ہماری آنکھیں سلامت ہیں مگر ہم قرآن شریف نہیں پڑھتے یو ایس اے سے ہمارے ایک دوست کا فون آیا میسج میسج آئے وہ صبح حرم شریف میں تھا مدینہ شریف میں وہ مجھے کہتا ہے مولانا صاحب میری وائف جو ہے بیچاری بہت شارٹ سائٹڈ ہے بہت لمیٹڈ سائٹ ہے اس کی اور اب جو ہے اس کا ہیئرنگ بھی افیکٹڈ ہے وہ بیچاری بہری بھی ہوتی جا رہی ہے مجھے ڈر لگتا ہے اگر وہ اندھی اور بہری ہو گئی تو وہ چلے گی کیسے ابھی تو کم سے کم سنائی دیتا ہے تو وہ چلتی ہے لیکن اگر دونوں چلا گیا تو پھر اس کا کیا ہوگا آپ پلیز دعا کریں اللہ اس کی آنکھ بھی سلامت رکھے اس کے کان بھی سلامت رکھے اس کو اللہ نے کہا امن یم لکھ السما ول ابصار اس کو اللہ نے کہا واللہ اخرج کم من بطون امہات کو لا تعلمون شرطہ وجعل لکم السما ول ابصار ول افعیدت لعلکم تشکرون خدا نے تمہیں تمہاری ماں کے پیٹ سے نکالا تمہیں کچھ خبر نہیں تھی خدا نے تمہیں کان دیے آنکھ دی دل لیے تاکہ تم خدا کا شکر کرو تو آنکھ از اے گریٹ نعمت بلیسنگ آف اللہ زبان و تعالیٰ وی ہیو ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اٹس اے نعمت مینی نعمت سین آور باڈی آنکھ کان زبان ہاتھ پاؤں ایک ایک انگلی is ni'mat even the tooth in our mouth is a ni'mat if that saliva dries out our tongue will be stuck and we can't talk we can't speak so the tooth is also a ni'mat of Allah so today we are talking about this ni'mat of eye ni'mat of eye it's worth millions of pounds This person got into an accident, lost his eyesight, 
he claimed insurance he got i don't know how many millions but he said i'm ready to give all those millions if i get my eyes back you see how many millions this guy is worth now we need to use these eyes for positive things and avoid misuse and abuse how can we use our eyes positively <coughs> number one look at the beautiful creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْزُرُوا In another place أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَيَنْزُرُوا كَيْفَ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Do they not go around the earth and see how Allah created the heavens and the earth? Go around, also see how was the ending of the Mujrimeen and take ibrat and lessons from there. Now, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ We go on journeys, travels, we see many things. Our mind is opened up. If we stay in one place, then we are like that frog of the well, which thinks the water is only in this well, there is no other water around the world. But if you take it out from there and put it in an ocean, he'll say, oh, there's lots of water here. So when we go around, we see the creation of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mountains, the beautiful sceneries, the oceans, the birds, the fishes, the various ways of living of people. Also, if you don't go around, if you see planet Earth, you will see how Allah has created the Earth. Blue planet on BBC, how the fishes work on their world, how Allah has created these things. So, number one, use your eyes to take the leel of the existence and wujud of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, there are many people who turn atheists, agnostics, don't believe in Allah. Allah is saying, go around and see, hanzuru, kaifa khalaqallahu samawati wa Observe, Dr. Raja Sahib said, 80% of our information comes through the eyes. If you observe and you see, then you'll realize that now nah, there is a creator. Sir Isaac Newton says, when I look at the universe and the planets and the sun and the moon and the stars and their orbits, when I observe that, it compels me to believe that there is someone behind it who created everything and who is extremely powerful who is extremely knowledgeable, and who is extremely wise, because without power, without knowledge, without wisdom, such a beautiful, organized manner cannot be brought into existence. It did not come into existence by chance. There is a powerful creator behind it. How did he realize the creator? By observing <coughs> the planets. Hazrat Allama Shibli Nomani Rahmatullah has written that Sir Isaac Newton was in England and he was surrounded by people who believed in Trinity but he himself did not believe in Trinity, he was a Unitarian, he believed in the oneness of Allah. And Allama Shibli says if Islam had reached him, he might have embraced Islam, accepted it. So use your eyes to observe the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that He is there. He is the one who created everything. 
Number two, use your eyes to look at the food and drinks which Allah has made for you. That pizza, that biryani, even that piece of bread, roti, which came in that plate in front of you. How many people have been working behind it? That atta, that rice, you bought it from the shop. The shopkeeper bought it from warehouse. He bought it from someone who imported it. The importer had it exported from another country. And where it's exported from, it was collected from various farmers. And the farmers worked behind it. And those who worked behind it, they farmed in the farmland, they sowed the seed and they worked behind it, watered it, looked after it for six months. And before that, you know, what happened? Where did the seeds originally come from? Who sent down the rainwater? Thousands of people have been working for that one piece of bread which is in your plate. This is what Hazrat Maulana Khalil Ahmad Saharan Puri Rahmatullah says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحَصُوهَا Allah did not bring plural, He brought singular. He did not say, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحَصُوهَا Allah said, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ One ni'mat, behind one ni'mat, there are hundreds of ni'mat. If you start pondering over that one ni'mat, you will fail to calculate it, you will fail to enumerate it, you will fail to get to the bottom of it. So look at your food, your drinks, whenever you sit down to eat and think about Allah. And when you do think about that, what are you going to do? Shukr. Alhamdulillah. Wa shukrulillah. When you do shukr of Allah, Allah will give you more. Then shakartu. And then number three, positive use of the eyes is reading Quran Sharif. Make a habit of reading Quran Sharif every day. Because this is amali shukr of the eyes. Practical shukr. Especially with Ramadan around the corner. Get into the habit from now. Get into the system. Start reading Quran Sharif. Will you do so inshallah? Hands up if you are going to start reading Quran from today inshallah. Every day as much as you can. Three siparas. If not three, one sipara. If not half sipara. Are a quarter separate by one page and slowly, slowly progress two pages, three pages. Ladies listening as well, you know, bring down that musalla, bring down that rahel, bring down that Quran Sharif and start reading. Reading good books, educating yourself. These eyes are for this, use it for good purpose. Don't misuse this ni'mat of Allah because that would be an abuse of the ni'mat of Allah. How do we misuse this ni'mat of Allah? First of all, by looking at the opposite gender. Bad Nazari. This is one of the main things. Guna. Guna, sin of the eye. We are living in an age where the concept of sin has been wiped out. The society around us think that there is no such thing as a sin. They think that everything is okay, everything is good, everything is virtuous, you can do whatever you like. The advertiser Nike says just do it. <coughs> Whatever you want to do, just do it. Don't think about anyone, what will someone say, what will someone do, how, how will people see me. Don't care about anyone or anything. Just do whatever you want to do. Just see whatever you want to see. Just watch whatever you want to watch. Look at whoever you want to look at. There is no concept of sin in today's society. So, we will leave them to one side. We over here in these four walls are all Muslims. We are bound 
by the kalima la ilaha illallah muhammadun rasulullah whose hukum hukum kiska chalta hai allah ka aur way of life sunnat kiski follow karni hai rasulullah us way hasana role model who is our role model muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam whatever allah says we have to do whatever prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam does we have to obey this is our motto this is our life this makes us muslims because islam means total submission to the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if there is any hesitation any reservation any second thoughts about allah's hukum or about the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then this will affect your islam this is why allah said ya ayyuhal ladina amanu dkhulu fi as-silmi kaffa enter islam fully wholeheartedly now if allah and his rasul say something is a sin we have to understand it's a sin sin of the eye sin of the ears sin of the tongue sins of the hands and the feet and the private parts sins related to wealth and property looting stealing interest sood gambling whatever allah and his rasul say is a sin is a sin no matter how much you feel is majburi i have to do it i have to take mortgage i have to pay loan i have to do this i have got no other choice no my friend you do have a choice where there is a will there is a way so you have to understand if allah and his rasul say something is a sin then it's a sin sin of the eye allah and his rasul have told us to lower our gaze qul lil mu'minin yaghuddu min absarihim ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك ازكى لهم ان الله خبير بما يصنعون وقل للمؤمنات يغضضن من ابصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن addresses to both mu'minin and mu'minat mu'minin should look down as well mu'minat should look down as well sometimes mu'minat think that looking down is for men only for us it's okay i'm wearing niqab i can look at whatever i want No, that's the wrong concept mu'minat have to look down as well nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ala man hafiza farjahu falahu aljannah nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said an nazaru sahmun masmum min siham iblis نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سے لعن اللہ الناظر والمنظور علیہ اللہ کرسز دا ون ہو اسٹیز اینڈ دا ون ہو از اسٹیئر ایٹ ہی سیڈ نظر اینڈ اسٹیئرنگ واچنگ لوکنگ ایٹ دی اپوزٹ جینڈر از اے پوائزنس ایرو فرام دی ایروز آف ابلیس he shoots that arrow at your heart and he he takes the janaza out of your soul and your spirit and your ruh once you fall into this habit of looking at things you shouldn't be looking at there's no end to it because it looks tasty feels nice you get a buzz out of it and you want more and more and more that's the poisonous arrow he shot at your heart and he poisoned your heart now you can't see any way out this is one of the <coughs> main misuses of the eyes another misuse of the eye is looking at other people's property with intention of theft stealing you see someone's wallet someone's mobile someone's money someone drop something you look at it nobody is watching you pick it up and run away this is the misuse of the eye blind man cannot steal because he can't see 
you go eyes you can see you, you misuse your eyes today we want to talk about the first misuse how people misuse it reminds me of hazrat qari amir hasan sahab rahmatullahi alayhi khalifa of hazrat sheikh zakaria nawallah umar qadahu who said is zamane mein teen guna bahut aam hai badgumani badzubani aur badnigahi badgumani we have bad thoughts about one another ही <laughs> This is why in Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah said, Ya ayu al-nadina amanu ishtanibu kaseeram min al-dhan, inna ba'da al-dhanni ithmun, wa la tajassasu annan, wa la yaghtab ba'dukum ba'da. Because zan leads to ghibat. So Allah brought zan first and then ghibat. If you don't think bad about other people, you won't do ghibat. But if you do think bad about people, you'll do ghibat as well. So, one guna, is bad gumani other guna is bad zubani and hazrat said third guna which is very arm is bad nigahi everybody is mubtala with bad nigahi looking at the opposite gender with lust shahwat allah maaf kar hazrat sheikh rahmatullah ali also said bad nigahi aisa guna hai ki isme awam aur khawas sabhi mubtala hai it's such a sin that the general public and khawas are both engaged in it may allah protect us so we have to understand the gravity of the matter now let me first mention some statistics about this subject भाई कारी नहीं इस्माइल साहब को कुर्सी दो बेचारे थक गए हैं इनको कुर्सी पर बिठाओ या उधर पीछे कुर्सी पर बैठ जाओ हाँ वी हैव सम स्टैटिस्टिक्स हियर विच से आई गो ओवर देम क्विकली देर आर 420 मिलियन वेब पेजेस डेडिकेटेड टू पोर्नोग्राफी मेंस हेल्थ रिपोर्ट्स porn uh, rewires your brain it hijacks your libido and it leads to depression some statistics viewing pornography is the largest money making industry in the world it makes more money than pop industry it makes more money than sport and everything put together the largest money making industry is pornography in one place i read that in america 40 million people are addicted to pornography and every second every every second 28000 people are watching pornography every second 30% said it affected their productivity 20% said they would rather watch porn than have intimacy with their partner 80% of males surveyed were married or uh in a relationship they say 50 years ago it was a blessing to see a naked woman now she is at the touch of a button porn is a drug that leads to addiction which leads to distancing from loved ones and losing jobs people watch porn at work and at uni many times lose their jobs fail in their exams 
all because of being addicted to pornography. This young man in his uni computer room was alone with his computer on. Musliman young man, his friend comes in and he was watching a blue movie. So his friend said, Are you a hunkare? Sharuni outi. And he said, No, what's wrong with it? I'm only watching. I'm not doing anything. The first thing is, his sharam is gone. If it was someone else with a bit of sharam, he would have immediately turned it off. So he's become a sharam. And then he is being bold. <laughs> I'm only watching, I'm not doing anything. This is where the society is going down. Now I'm mentioning these statistics. You might think that these are from American or non-Muslim websites. Muslims are Park Saab, Sufi Jannati. Nah, my friends. Kharbooza, kharbooze se rang bakarta hai. Watermelon gets the color from the watermelon next to it. So our society does affect us. It says here, pornography is a form of sexism. Women are commoditified, objectified in pornography. They are looked at as a commodity, as an object. This is why today society has become such that, you know, even if there was an accident, someone is bichari in pain out there, then people's mind will be towards, you know, the other side, looking at their beauty, taking photo, not calling ambulance, not feeling pity for the person, rather their mind is dirty. We can't understand this. You know, Allah maaf kare ye bichare buriyas. Once, you know, long time ago, uh, one of my friends wanted to buy a car, so I took him. And we were coming from Dalarum and there was some advertising that this car is there. Can we have a look at it? I said, go on then. No problem. So we went. And he said, okay, I'll take you for a test drive. So he sat in the driver's seat and me and my friend in the car, he was at the front, I was at the back. And he was going through the town center. And every second he's saying, nice one, nice one, nice one. I was scratching my head, ah, who will end a nice one, nice one? <laughs> then I realized, oh, my God, but you nagi nagi boy, you do it. <laughs> You see that mentality. Now this mentality affects us as well. That's how the brain works. This is misuse of the eye. It makes a woman an object. You have no pity for the other person. No matter how much pain she is in. You will only look at her as an object. You will feel that I wish I could sleep with her. This is that lust and that shahwat and that desire which creeps into the mind. It says here, it can lead to degrading women and violence at home. I'm not making this up. I'm just quoting from the websites where I took it from. So it can and it does happen. Most of the time, violence at home is because the person is too addicted. So he doesn't like his wife anymore. He looks at all those beautiful women who go to the makeup and then before they come in front of the camera. So when he sees those things, he doesn't like his wife. And then there's fight and the arguments and then one thing leads to another. Families are shattered. Kids bichare beach me involved. It makes one dissatisfied with one's wife and men get bored with one partner. It creates a single standard beauty which no woman can live up to. It's fake. Aage likha hai GNQ statistics 53% of the no fappers had developed a regular porn habit between the age of 12 and 40. Porn habit developed at the age of between 12 and 40. But make sure you look after them properly. Don't give them 
easy access to mobiles and computers. An alarming 16% said they had wa started watching before the age of 12. Among 27 to 31 year olds surveyed, 19% suffered from premature ejaculation. 25% are not interested in intimacy with their partner. 34% experience erectile dysfunction. These are all statistics. Let me now read to you some RBTs of those who are affected by this. Their own, you know, kya kehte hain, RBT? Autobiography. One person writes, people might start off with straight, straight sex, man and woman. But this would then get too boring. So they will start to explore lesbian, which again will get boring. They will then move on to role play fantasies, meaning doctor, nurses, boss, secretary, after which they can't get satisfied. So they watch family role plays, stepdaughter, stepfather, stepmother, stepson. He writes, it is at this point that I had a problem and I decided to seek help. I was wondering where do I draw the line? <coughs> do you understand? normal relationship उसके बाद फिर अपने हम जिन्स के साथ रिलेशनशिप और दिस रिमाइंड मी वंस आई वाज रीडिंग सम स्टैटिस्टिक्स ऑफ दिस एंड देयर वाज अ वेरी नाइस आर्टिकल बाय दिस मुस्लिम डॉक्टर एंड ही सेड रिमेंबर एवरी टाइम यू वॉच समथिंग एंड देन डिलीट इट इट कैन गेट डिलीटेड फ्रॉम योर कंप्यूटर और आईपैड और मोबाइल बट इट डजंट गेट डिलीटेड फ्रॉम द गूगल सर्वर that's where they get their statistics from. It remains there. That's the Google server. Allah's server, it remains there as well. Unless you do Tawbah. Then Allah wipes it out. And from the statistics they surveyed that the top 10 countries in the world which watch pornography, among them, Six are Muslim countries. And if I was to name them, you would be shocked. And it mentioned that this Muslim country watches male porn the most. Gay porn. Man on man. This Muslim country watches gay porn the most. Statistics are not making it up. It's an article. Vancouver, doctor from Vancouver, he wrote it. So it starts with straight and then goes on and then you don't like it and then you go to fantasies and then it goes to that stepfather, stepdaughter, stepmother, stepson. And you know something, it, it's now moving towards pedophilia. The other day I read on Twitter, one of the senators in USA was saying on Twitter that pedophilia is not a problem. It's only a person's personal desire. There's nothing wrong with it. And I said, Baba, Mahara, Badmashwe, lesbian, gay, what do Adal Kalaka, or Dimi Rin and Nana, but Chow, but we attack the one. Pedophilia, and we allow Kalaka. There's nothing wrong with pedophilia. No, 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 but you rip That's where the society is heading, my friend. I'm telling you, that's where it's going. We might not be alive here, but that's where they're going to end up. It's only Islam which is keeping us sane. As long as we hold on to our deen, our Islam will remain on track. If we lose our deen, our Islam will be gone. We'll be like them as well. 
And remember, we should not be like them. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. We have to guide them. We have to guide them. We have to tell them this is right, that is wrong. And you know, believe me, many non-Muslims out there appreciate Muslims. They say, Muslim Bohara, they are good. They hold on to their values. Qatar may LGBT, they stood firm. So they value it. So this person is asking, that's when I realize, where do I draw the line? I would say to him, my friend, Islam has already drawn the line for you. It's up to you to take that hard step and put a stop to it. Number two. I read one another point. Kids discuss explicit, explicit contents in schools. And I would add to that in maktabs. They discuss it like football. Some discuss which porn stars to watch. Number three, this is something from, I heard from some Ustad. He said, one student said to the Ustad, my problem got so bad, I used to watch explicit content every day after school, and then I used to masturbate, but I couldn't go for a bath because my dad would shout at me for wasting water and having ghusl every day, so I would just come with that napaki to the masjid and read Quran in front of those that. This is one student saying it, maktab student. Imagine what will be happening to those who don't come to the maktab. Every day he's coming to the masjid, he's reading Quran. Junubi admi, you can't enter the masjid. It's haram for a person who's in need of ghusl to enter masjid without ghusl. It's haram for him to touch the Quran. It's haram for him to read the Quran. And this young man is doing that every day. Because his dad is always shouting at him. This means if your son does or daughter does have shower every day, there must be reason behind it. Don't shout at them. Let them stay parked. Number four, one 14, 15 year old would watch explicit content and then tell everything to his 10 year old brother, encouraging him to watch as well. Allah hifazat kare. Effects of porn, I know we're going over the time a little bit, but you'll have to stay for a sabar patience. In Allah ma'as According to experts, porn creates a high dopamine in the brain. Is the highly addictive chemical that's responsible for pleasure. It's the novelty of porn which makes it highly addictive to the point where some users isolate themselves away from their partners. Paula Hall, a sex addict therapist, says dopamine thrives on the novelty. No matter how gorgeous your partner looks, no one can compete with novelty. I would say here, Kullu Jadidin Laziz. But despite the high levels of dopamine, many addicts, desirable feelings, uh, sorry, many addicts describe feelings of shame and disgust with themselves afterwards. Sometimes it results in losing relationship, meaning divorce, losing job, losing self-esteem. Something that sometimes they turn suicidal. One in five men describe themselves as suicidal. Then she writes, it is possible to overcome these addictions though. She writes a few cases. Number one, Michael, name changed, 28, was 13 when he came across porn on the internet while he was searching for some material regarding his homework. He was only 13. Naked bodies started popping up. He felt a rush of emotion. By 16, it became a regular habit. 
he just couldn't stop. He began watching it for hours. He stopped going out with friends, even with his girlfriend, in order to watch porn. The craving intensified. He started watching different kinds of ethnicities, different bodies and different shapes. Now, how did he overcome this addiction? Number one, he says, first of all, I confessed, I confessed to my girlfriend who is now my wife. She encouraged me to find accountability, not only in her, but also in a mentor, another man who had overcome it and who he could relate to and they could relate to one another. He says, I did that. And it helped me a lot. So he confessed and he found accountability to someone who went through that stage and regularly talked to him and that person guided him. Right? This could be your Imam Sab, your Peel Sab, your Sheikh. You tell him this is my habit, please help me. And he'll give you some steps to take. Accountability. Every Muslim is accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. One young man wrote to Sheikh Yunus Sahib, Hazrat, Mujhe Badnazri ki adat hai, ye adat nahi chhoot rahi hai. Hazrat ne farmaya, jab Badnazri ka shauk ho, to ye soch lo ki ye aankh jahannam ki aag mein kaise jalegi. If I keep watching this and I die, how will my eye burn in the fire of Jahannam? Am I able to tolerate that fire of Jahannam? You can't tolerate a kachara. Allah has made this eyelid so that it can remove all the kacharas and the dirt and the dust. Imagine how this eye will tolerate the fire of Jahannam. An eye itself will burn in the fire of Jahannam. The whole body will burn. I will burn as well. Accountability. Number two, she writes that you can cure yourself by replacing this habit with something else like sports, outdoor activities, etc. I would say, this is a good idea, but you have to do something इसको रिप्लेस करने के लिए सबसे पहली चीज रिप्लेस करने के लिए क्या है मस्जिद कुरान शरीफ अल्लाह का घर अल्लाह के पास आ जाओ और उसके बाद उन लोगों के हाल अहवाल पढ़ो कि जो अपनी आंख की हिफाजत करते थे उससे तुमको हिम्मत आएगी इफ यू रीड अबाउट दोस who protected their eyes, you will get lots of himmat from them. Let me read to you how Salafi Salihin used to control their eyes. I wrote this article some time ago and I posted it on my Facebook account as well. Fear of Salaf from temptation posed by women. The piety and taqwa and khawf and fear of Allah made the salafi salihin really scared of the fitna of women. Maimoon ibn Mehran says, being entrusted to look after Baytul Mal treasury would be easier for me than being told to look after a woman. Seer A'lam in Nubala, volume 5, page 77. Ata ibn Abi Rabah said, if I was entrusted with the treasury, I would prove to be a trustworthy person. However, I wouldn't trust my nafs ego with a woman even if she was extremely ugly. Sayyid ibn Musayyib says, whenever shaitan loses hope from deviating someone, he approaches them from the women's side. Whenever he lo loses hope of gumrahi, of someone deviating someone, then he approaches them from the women's side. Then Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib said, while he was 84 years old, 
one of his eyes had gone blind then the uh, and the other eye was also watery in that state and at that age sayyid bin musayyib said the thing that scares me most is looking at women i wouldn't want to look at a woman he also said i don't fear upon myself from anything as much as i fear from women they remark but someone of your age has no desire for women and women have no desire for you he replied it is as i tell you this was despite his eyesight was really weak anas radiyallahu anhu says when a woman passes by you close your eyes until she has gone ahead anas ibn malik radiyallahu anhu you know once i was talking about this subject in canada toronto as be and who abd nazri us ka nuksan and then you go into you know the host house for food he said there and this you know jolly friend he said mar sab bhi aankh ne ki bhi nahi hifazat kar rahe jo aankh na apna nafs na upar punishment mugwan to hu punishment lagu ke bhai em tem jo hi jaye if you look here and there then punish your nafs by saying astaghfirullah 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 11 times not less not more so when the nafs is punished 11 times every time you stare then slowly slowly the gravity of the you know situation will appear and the taste of that sin will go away the sin will become bitter karwa thai jaye gulo pachi nafs ke ke yaar ato darwa kare agya re istighfar pada kare ka ve nu guno no karao so nafs pachi guno ni kare me ko biju punishment mako ge એવું પનિશમેન્ટ કરવાનું કે ભાઈ એવરી ટાઈમ મારી આંખ એમ તેમ જાય તો એક ડોલર કેનેડિયન ડોલર સદકો દેવાનો મને કે મોલી સાહેબ તો આખી વેદી સીમ જ નહીં જાય હવે કોઈ તારી મારું ના લાગે હું ના બોલ નહીં હવે હું કરી મોલી સાહેબ હવે અમે પેલી એના ઉપર ઝીબ્રા ક્રોસિંગ પર ઊભી લાવવાની પેલી અમે એની જાય તો હવે આંખો બંધ કરી લઈએ અમે એમ કે હાના સિબને માલિક ઈ સેઈંગ આંખે બંધ કર લો સામે સે ઓરડ ગુજરે તો આંખ બંધ કર લો મત દેખો અસર નીચી રાખો करते थे मौलाना शमसुद्दीन बसार रहमत रानेर में शेखुल हदीस थे उनके घर से जामिया हुसैनिया पढ़ाने आते तो मेन रोड से ना आते बैक स्ट्रीट से आते और किताब यूं हाथ में दबाई और नीचे देखते और नीचे देखते देखते सीधे मस्जिद मदरसे में और मदरसे से निकले हाथ में किताब नीचे देखते देखते सीधे अपने घर में ऊपर देखते ही नहीं थे अभी की बात है नहीं कोई पुरानी बात नहीं कोई पंद्रह सौ चौदह सौ साल पहले की बात नहीं अभी पचास साल पहले की बात है ऐसे अल्लाह वाले थे तो अपनी आंख की हिफाजत करते थे अनस इबन मालिक रजी अल्लाह से इबन उमर रजी अल्लाह से इट इज पार्ट ऑफ द पीपल्स अबैंडनिंग द ट्रस्ट दट दे पीप इन साइड रूम्स एंड हाउसेज यानी ये अमानत ज़ाय हो जाती है ये खियानत है अमानत का ज़ाय होना है कि आदमी लोगों के घरों में पीप करता रहे और दूसरों को गैर महरम को देखता फिर ये गैर महरम को देखने की आदत बुरी है इफ यू वांट गो इन टू समन साउथ डोंट जस्ट बार्ज इन टू देयर किचन जस्ट बिकॉज दे योर नेबर्स अरे भाई कोई ने बुरका पहना है नहीं पहना है हिजाब पहना है नहीं पहना है उनका घर है नॉक करो खड़े रहो वेट करो इजाजत मिले जब तब जाओ आधा में ही सलमान फारसी रजी अल्लाह यूज टू से to die and then be resurrected and die again be resurrected and die again be resurrected with all that pain of death sakarat of mort is three times this would be easier than looking at the satar of someone or that someone looks at my satar so that pain is easier than looking at the satar private parts of someone humaid ibn hilal says among us There was a man named Aswad ibn Kulthum. When he would walk, his eyes would never exceed his feet. There were some chambers of the palace along the way in which there were some women who would sometimes remove their headgear and sit outside on the balcony or sometimes they would remove parts of their clothes. When he would be walking from there, they see someone coming, they would feel scared and rush to cover themselves. then someone among them say oh it's only aswad ibn kulthum don't worry he'll never look up he's only looking down one of the salihin was asked where should we search for you in the hereafter he said look for me among those who will be looking at allah subhanahu wa taala 
So the person asked, how can you be so certain about this that you will be looking at Allah? And he said, because over here in dunya, I control my gaze from forbidden stuff. And because I refrain from sins and indecencies. Fawahish. Because I protect myself from sins and fawahish. And because I don't look at anything I shouldn't be looking at. I knew for certain that Allah will allow me to look at himself on the day of judgment. In general. Apni aankh mein haya ka surma lagao. Sharam ka surma lagao. Jab ye surma aankh mein hoga. To qiyamat ke din Allah ka didar nasib ho. اگر یہاں ایسی چیزیں فلتی چیزیں دیکھتے رہے تو اللہ کے دیدار سے محروم رہیں گے اسی لیے سوری علی عمران کی ایک آیت یاد آتی اللہ پاک سے زُیِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرِ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْلِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ قُلْ أَوْنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّنْ ذَلِكُمْ لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْعِبَادِ Beautified in the eyes of men is the love of things they covet meaning women children and then wealth needlessly hoarded wealth gold silver horses farmlands allah started off with number one which people love what is that women women first then allah said everything else and then allah said that is only Mata'ul brief enjoyment of this dunya. Shall I tell you something better than all this? For muttaqeen, jannatun tajiri min tahti anhar khari. And then first thing Allah said, وَأَزْوَاجٌ مُتَحَّرَةٌ If you avoid women of this dunya and staring at them, Allah will give you the hurayeen of jannat. You only have to control your nafs for 50, 60, 70 years. This temporary life, and for eternally you will get the beautiful hurayeen of Jannah. Such hur no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard of, no mind has ever thought of. That's how beautiful those hurs will be if you control your eyes in this dunya. Waqi ibn al-Jarrah said we came out with Sufyan Sauri on the day of Eid. He said the first thing we do today is keep our eyes low. Because in those customs, women used to come for eat Salat as well. So he said there's lots of people here, lots of women as well. So keep looking down, don't look up. You know, our women don't come here in Eid. I was in America. There was a prayer for Eid. There was a prayer in the park. There was a prayer in the park. There was a prayer in the park. میں تو تراج پڑھنا کہا تھا مجھے کہا عید کی نماز پڑھانی ہے بیان بھی کرنا ہے یہ میں بات کر رہا ہوں میری شادی سے پہلے جی 1985 اب اس وقت تو میں انگلیش میں بیان بھی نہیں کرتا تھا بہت بھاری پڑھتا تھا کہ انگلیش میں بیان کرنا پڑھا ہے میں نے سب تیار کیا لکھا لکھا پریپیر کر کے بیان کیا نماز پڑھائی خطبہ دیا اب جو ہے پیچھے کی چار پانچ صف جو ہیں مردوں کی بیچ میں تھوڑا سا گاپ اور اس کے بعد عورتیں عورتیں پیچھے برابر اسکاپ اسکاپ ہجاب ہجاب پہن گے جیسے ہی نماز فنیش ہوئی اور خطبہ خطبہ پورا ہوا سب گاڑیوں میں جان لگے تو عورتوں کا وہ ہجاب بھی گیا بیک کھل گئی آئینہ آ گیا فلکسٹک آ گئی میک اپ شیک اپ وہیں پر شروع ہو گیا میں کہا بھاگو یہاں سے ابھی تو ہماری شادی بھی نہیں ہوئی تھی یہ کیا مصیبت کری ہوگی تو عید کے دن جب عورتیں آتی ہیں تو پھٹنا کھڑا ہو جاتا ہے اس لیے انہوں نے کہا سفیان سعودی نے کہ بھائی بھاگو یہاں سے نگاہ نیچی رکھو خبردار جو کسی عورت کی طرف دیکھا تھا حسان ابن ابی سنان went out for Eid نماز when he came back home his wife kept pestering him by saying how many beautiful women did you stare at today when she dragged it too much he said to her woe unto you since I left home and until I returned, my eyes never moved from my toes. 
All the way, I was only looking down. I never looked here and there. Ala ibn Ziyad says, don't stare at even the upper garment of a woman because staring incites shahwat into the heart. Ibrahim ibn Adham said, always looking at unlawful things takes away the ma'rifat, recognition of haq from the heart. So, this is how Salafi Salihin used to protect themselves. Finishing off, my dear brothers, look at our state and compare it with the state of Salafi Salihin, where they were and where we are. We need to aim for that. We need to get there. We need to protect ourselves, men and women. You know, I haven't brought the statistics of women, but in those articles there was statistics of women also watching porn and he said that women also but in fact in one place he was written that women watch more than men huh? or sometimes you know Allah maaf kare, husband and wife both watch porn together this is even worse is my dear brothers, elders, sisters, I is a ni'mat of Allah and we need to do shukr of the ni'mat of Allah with our tongue, alhamdulillah, with our heart, appreciate the favor of Allah through the eyes, appreciate it and with our actions, use the eyes for good stuff, don't use it for bad stuff and read Quran Sharif, read nice books. You know, if you uh, have TV, you watch good things on there. Uh, Kaaba Sharif or, you know, listen to Quran Sharif or whatever. But don't watch something that ignites and excites the passion and builds it up and creates the shahwat. Because this will kill off your soul. Janaza nikal jata hai. Bad nazari se ruh ka janaza nikal jata hai. Ye chote chote bachche hafiz hote hain. लेकिन स्ट्रगल करते हैं क्यों इसलिए कि जैसे ही वो 12 13 साल के होते हैं गड़बड़ सड़बड़ शुरू हो जाती है फिर वो दिमाग जो है वो पोल्यूटेड हो जाता है फिर उसमें कुरान शरीफ नहीं उतरता है इसलिए बच्चे जब छोटे हो 9 10 साल के तो उनको हाफिज बना दो हजरत जुनैद बगदादी रहमतुल्लाह अलैह वन सो दिस पर्सन स्टेयरिंग एट एन अमरद अमरद मींस यंग बॉय विदाउट बियर्ड इट्स कॉल्ड अमरद एंड ही लुक्स लाइक अ गर्ल so he was staring at that Amrat. So Junaid Baghdadi said, Hey, what are you doing? And he said, Hazrat, I was looking at the beautiful creation of Allah. Now Hazrat Junaid Baghdadi said, Badmash Nalaya, you were staring with lust and shahwat. I could see that in your eyes. And you are going to forget your Quran because of this bad habit of yours. After a few years, he totally, completely forgot his Quran. Because of Ben Nazri. May Allah protect our Fazi Kiram from Ben Nazri. Protect our Ulmai Kiram from Ben Nazri. Protect our elders from Ben Nazri. Protect our women from Ben Nazri. Protect our kids from Ben Nazri. Especially watching all that filth and dirty stuff out there. May Allah protect us. May Allah keep our eyes bark, saf, clean. And give us the surma of haya and sharam. And keep our eyes clean, keep our hearts clean, and resurrect us on the day of Qiyamah with clean people, and keep us in Jannat with the Park and pure and clean Hastis, with the Muttaqeen and Parhezgar. May Allah keep us strong on our Deen and Iman and Sirat al Mustaqeem. Jazakallah for inviting me, giving me the opportunity to sit here and talk to you. Jazakallah to Mawlana, Wasiyullah Sahab, Imam Sahab as well, and everybody, community, community. Inshallah, we'll meet again some other time and uh, may Allah make the talk beneficial for myself and for all of us as well. If I said something bad, something feel bad, forgive me. May Allah reward Mulana Iyasa as well for the beautiful presentation with regards to the anatomy of the eye. We need to understand the intricacies. We need to protect our eyes. You know, go to opticians, look after our eyes. May Allah protect us. You know, our Hazrat Sheikh Yunus Sab. After every namaz, he used to read Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru 11 times. And then he would blow on these two fingers. 
to them their rest. Once. That's it. That's how Shaykh used to, used to do. After his tasbihat, the Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, but other than Skat, at the end he would say, Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru. I heard this myself. Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru, Ya Nuru. Now, when Hazrat Shaykh Yunus Sab came in his last safar, Sha'ban, he died two months later in Shawwal. Because he came here, he went for Umrah, he went back to Ramzan, and 16th of Shawwal he passed away. So exactly two months before he came here, we took him to Dr. Ilyas Raja's surgery for eye test. Dr. Salim Natha and Dr. Ilyas Raja tested his eyes and they took the photo and everything and they said, Hazrat, aapki aankh bilkul salamat hai. Isme motiya bhi nahi hai, ko aur cheez bhi nahi hai. Aur pihe jo veins hai, usme khun bhi barabar sahi miqdar mein dor raha hai. And he was 82 at the time. Imagine, 82, aankh bilkul salamat. خون بھی برابر دوڑ رہا ہے آنکھ میں کوئی نقص نہیں کوئی کمی نہیں نمبر ایک شیخ نے پوری زندگی اپنی آنکھ کی حفاظت کی اور نمبر دو یہ چھوٹا سا عمل یہ نور کیا ہے اللہ کے نائنٹی نائن نیمز میں سے ایک نیم ہے تو اس کو آدمی یا نور ہو اللہ نے کہا وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَا فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا اللہ کے نام سے پکار ہو تو یا نور ہو اللہ کے اس نام سے پکارنا ہے اور اس سے پھر ہم اس کو دم کرو آپ کو بھی فائدہ ہوگا انشاءاللہ لیکن وہ بیدت بیدت مت کہو بات چلی ہے تو میں کہتا ہوں آپ کو بٹھاؤں گا تھوڑی جائے شیخ یونس صاحب نے کہا کہ بھئی یا نور ہو اور دوسری چیز دوسرا حضرت کا عمل کیا تھا یا قویو سر پہ یوں ہاتھ رکھا اور یا قویو 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 یا وفات سے دو دن پہلے یا ایک دن ایک دن پہلے مسندی احمد ابن حنبل پڑھ رہے تھے اور اس میں جی حاشیہ لکھ رہے تھے اتنا سٹرونگ دماغ حضرت پچاس سال تک بخاری شریف پڑھائی معمولی بات ہے ففٹی ایئرز بخاری پروہ ہے فل ہن ففٹی ایئرز بخاری شریف تو شیخ یونس صاحب ایک دفعہ کہنے لگے کہ لوگ پوچھتے ہیں کہ یا نورو یا قویو نماز بات سنت ہے فرمائے نہیں یہ یا نورو یا قبیو سنت تو نہیں آپ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے نہیں پڑھا ہے لیکن اپنے جسم کا علاج کرنا سنت ہے اور اس کو بنیت علاج پڑھ لو کوئی حرج نہیں جو یا می that یا نورو اور یا قبیو in itself is not سنت of نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم but علاج remedy or cure of the body from بیماری and sicknesses is سنت so read Ya Nuru and Ya Qabiyyu with the niyat of ilaj and it will be included in the sunnah. You can read it. There are many other, you know, these types of azkar, awrah. There's no harm in there. People say this bidat that way. If you want to say something is bidat, be very careful. Your statement, you'll have to provide proof for it on the day of qiyamah. If there was something not bidat and you called it bidat, qiyamah ke din mushkil pad jao ge. You're going to have a hard time answering your statement, clarifying your statement on the day of Qiyamah. So, Allah is our eyes. Our eyes is our eyes. Our eyes is our eyes. Our eyes is our eyes. Allah 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 is our eyes. اور ہماری سوسائیٹی کو پاک کر دے کلین کر دے ہر قسم کے منکرات سے اللہ ہمیں بچا کر دے درو شریف پڑھنے شورت دعا سبحانک اللہم و بحمدک نشد و اللہ الہ الا نستغفر و نتو علیک اللہم لکا الحمد و لکا الشکر اللہم لا نحسی سنان علیک تکما تنیت علی نفسی اللہم صلی علی سیدنا محمد النبی اللہی و علی علیہ و صحابی و سلیم سلیم اللہم طہر قلوبنا من النفاق و اعمالنا من الریاء و السنتنا من الكذب و اعیوننا من الخیانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الاعیون و ما تخفی الصدور اللہم آتی نفوسنا تقواها و زکیها انت خیر من زکاها انت وليها و موتاها یا رحم الرحمین محضرت فضل و کرم سے ہم سب کی مغفرت فرما دیئے پوری امت کی مغفرت فرما دیئے پوری امت پر رحم کر دیئے کرم کر دیئے معاف فرما دیئے ہمارے یہاں اٹھنا بیٹھنا کہنا سننا قبول فرمائیے جو کچھ کہا اس پر ہمیں عمل کرنے کی توفیق نصیب فرمائیے ہماری آنکھوں کی حفاظت فرمائیے ہمارے کانوں کی زبان کی ہاتھ پاؤں شرمگاہ دل دماغ کی ہر قسم کی گناہوں پوری امت کو آنکھوں کی اس عظیم گناہ سے توبہ کرنے کی توفیق دا فرمائیے 
ہماری ٹوٹی پھوٹی دعائیں سنی ہی ربنا تقبل منا انکا انت السمیع العلیم و تب علینا انکا انت التواب الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم علیہ سیدنا محمد و علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم علیہ وسلم Jazak Allah khairan for Hazrat for the inspiring speech and advice. Uh, like Hazrat mentioned, inshallah, those who do have certain illnesses and these bad habits, you have your ulama in front of you, you have your imams, you have your scholars, our shuyukh as well, who can help you spiritually, inshallah, step by step to remove all these kind of illnesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to act upon all the things that have been said today. Jazak Allah. Inshallah, Ishaqi namaz 640 ko hogi, we'll have azan. I will have sunnahs and then inshallah 640 koi shakin namaz hobi. Jazakallah.